Dick Campbell and uh, Jimmy Bowen looking forward very much indeed to the challenge as Hearts try to put their off-field concerns to one side and uh, look for a place in Monday's draw. Highlights then coming up then of uh, Paddock Thistle against Hearts with commentary from John Barnes. For Dick Campbell's first lineup as manager of Partick Thistle, he sticks by the same starting eleven which drew with St Mirren on New Year's Day. The one-time Hearts defender Grant Murray will look to keep things tight in defence, while Armand Oni and Juan Ramon will lead the attack. Although his full name is Juan Ramon Escalas, he prefers Ramon. There are three enforced changes to the Hearts team, with Alan Mabry and Mark De Vries having moved to Leicester and Paul Hartley being suspended. That means Jimmy McAllister, Dennis Wyness and Kevin McKenna are recalled. In an attack-minded formation, Wyness will support from midfield a front three of Weir, McKenna and Hamill. The referee for this tenant's Scottish Cup tie is Craig Mackay. Old mates together in the technical area before this game. Kicks off, Dick Campbell and Jimmy Bourne. And... The game gets underway. I can tell you a pitch inspection around half past 11 this morning. It got the go-ahead, but there was a concern that if the rain were to continue to fall, then this game would be in jeopardy. Well, it started, but the rain has also started to fall. Grant Murray with the sliced clearance. This was in the area of the pitch that was uh, giving the referee cause for concern. Oni, nice little touch. Big Gordon having to deal with that pass back. And McFarlane, Weir, under pressure from Kenny Mill, one time Hearts player. One of three former Hearts players in the part of this old starting lineup. Craig Gordon's long delivery. Taken away by Fleming. This guy's a Ramon rather. Can't get there. Here's McKenna. Trying to put pressure on. Kenna looking for the corner kick, and he gets it. Came off Grant Murray last. On his corner, holds up. Back is Robbie Nielsen. Wyness with the shots. Well, he certainly pulled that one. Ramon and Partick Thistle get their first corner positive running there from the Spanish striker Stephen Presley across the cover short corner has worked good turn no delivery with a chance for Jimmy Mitchell Good start from the first division side. Coming away there was Gibson. And it was Mitchell's effort in the end which gave Craig Gordon a worrying moment. Hamill to McAllister. Players in the box for Hearts. One of them is McKenna. He was looking to find Graham Weir with a knockdown. There's a good cross in from McAllister. McKenna trying to tear up for Weir, but it was just a yard the wrong side of him. Dick Campbell explained to Stevie Fulton what's going on out there at the moment. Alongside him is assistant Jimmy Bone, one time Hart's favourite. That's McKenna. Spend a bit of space to try and get out of a tight area. He's won the throw. Canadian international Kevin McKenna. 
No doubt he'll be the target for Robbie Nielsen again. Nielsen's throw, looking for McKenna. Knocked away though by Mill. And here's McFarlane. Wyness flicks it on. Chance for McKenna! Glorious opportunity there for Hearts. And McKenna wasn't too far away with that. On the half volley, he caught it. And this is Ani. Through towards Oni. Breaks for Ramon. Now Oni. Square pass looking for Mitchell. Cut out there well by Andy Webster. Fine defending again by the Scotland International. Ramon held it up. He waited for Oni to make the run. And he was trying to pick out Jamie Mitchell. Fleming with the corner. Swings it in. Takes a touch off Craig Gordon, did it? Well, he feels he was impeded as that ball was played in from Derek Fleming. out by Fleming, Milne no gets a second chance. Looks are we only as far as McFarlane. Nice stamp. Down goes Weir in the challenge. A part of appeals for a penalty kick. Touch in there towards Weir, and went Kenny Milne with the challenge. He held his hands up immediately. Uh, there may have been a connection there from the left bit of Milne and Weir. Ah, Gibson finds Annie. Ahead of him is Oni. Breaks off McAllister. Falls for Oni. Good turn. Chance to lay it back towards Annie and taken off his boot there by backtracking Joe Hamill. This will still have it though. Here's Mill. Headed out by Webster. Gibson. The layoff to find. Fleming, but the free kick is given for the challenge from Phil Stamp there and Andy Gibson. Taken quickly, and Craig Gordon was alert there as that was fired in. The Campbell getting a little bit animated now. Never slow to give his opinion, is Dick. Clearance. Won it. Keeps it in. Trying to take on Webster. He's certainly proving a handful. Is Armand Oni, and he's done well. Here's Mitchell. It breaks back though. Derek Fleming on his left foot tries to turn it for Ramon, and off the woodwork. The best chance of the half so far for Partick Thistle. It was good play from Fleming to release Ramon. He took one touch and he was beaten away there by the upright. Opened his body up well to get the shooting opportunity. And Hamill. Once with Wyness. McAllister's cross. McKenna's underneath it. It breaks towards Robbie Nielsen. Well, we've seen him score from that sort of distance before. He was looking for his second goal for Hearts. Remember that one he scored against Basel in the UEFA Cup? Penny for his thoughts. Looks unperturbed at the moment, this John Robertson. Certainly sent out an attacking lineup. Almost look 4 2 4 at one stage. The line has been pulled more into the midfield area. And here's Hamill. Chance for Joe Hamill. Oh, he was trying to curl it, that one into the top corner. It was a great opportunity. And he eventually got the space.
Daniels Hamill. And it looked as though he was impeded there by the body check from Jamie Mitchell. So Hamill turned away from Gibson. Two man wall against Phil Stamps' free kick. Trying to catch it, goalkeeper Kenny Arthur. Well, if he caught it cleanly, he may well have done so. He spotted Arthur at the back post. The Hearts have won the last two Scottish Cup ties between these sides by 1-0 scorelines and the evidence of the first 45 minutes. It may just be one solitary goal that will split the sides on this occasion. Challenge from Stevie Fulton right away. The substitute. Towards McKenna, headed out by Milne. It breaks the stamp on the volley. Stamp with a chance there as it broke back to him, but he just didn't catch it right. What a try, though. Raised there by Grant Murray, and he's given away a free kick. Hamill swings it in. There's a chance now for Nielsen. Well, it was a really good opportunity for Robbie Nielsen. He broke to him, and on his left foot, he knocked it wide of that right hand post, but the chance was there. is normal. McKenna trying to get away from Madashi. Murray's back defending. Turns and gives it straight to Pereira. Ramon Pereira the substitute. And a good save by Kenny Arthur. Well, Thistle causing their own problems here. Grant Murray turning into the path of Pereira. And Kenny Arthur was well, scrambling. And Dick Campbell gave up his double glazing job to uh, take the full-time post here at Pardick Thistle. Pereira peels off to the left. Ramon Pereira. McKenna's calling for it. Pereira tries to take on Ani. The Frenchman wins that initial tackle. Pereira gets a second chance. Good cross in. McKenna controls it in his chest. Tries a shot. Deflected away by Madashi. And wide for the corner kick. Another good chance for Kevin McKenna. I don't think Madashi knew too much about it. But fortune favoured the home side. Hamill with the corner. Arthur keeps his eye on it. Got the touch. It was looping into the back post. Another corner to Hearts. And Kenny Arthur just got the touch that was required there. Hamill, head flick there, and the volley from Robbie Nielsen. Well, he's had a good few chances today, has Robbie Nielsen. And here's Pereira. Stamp, Nielsen. Swings it in here. Arthur's caught! And the header into the side, netting from Kevin McKenna. A great opportunity there for Hearts. The goalkeeper was caught in no man's land. And McKenna just couldn't get the right angle with the header. Armand Oni against Stephen Presley. Oni cuts it back. And away by Nielsen. The chance comes again for Thistle. And fired in there by Billy Gibson. Well, it was Oni using his body strength to hold off Stephen Presley and create the opening. Nielsen with an untidy clearance and Gibson with a follow-up shot. Young's header. It's normal. And Fulton gives away the free kick again. 
Stamp trying his luck from long range. And Kenny Arthur had to keep his eye on that one. Going for glory right at the end was Phil Stamp. It was certainly moving, that strike. And Kenny Arthur just raising a hand to push it over. Two minutes of stoppage time. As the Bulls have started. McAllister up towards Pereira. And, uh, Gibson just ducks down and allows that one to run through. And it looks as though at the moment this game is heading to a replay. Nielsen. And it's full time. And it will be a replay between these sides. Handshakes all round in the technical area between the good friends. Donald Park and John Robertson perhaps and Dick Campbell and Jimmy Bone, the party official management duo. Back for a replay at Tyne Castle on the 19th of January. It finishes here at Fairhill. Party official nil, hearts nil. Dick, uh, you a happy man tonight in your first game in charge? Aye, yeah, I'm reasonably happy. Um, we've restricted hearts to a, a 40 yard shot, really. My goalkeeper's not a safety mate. They've had the majority of the possession. Uh, we were disappointed in that, as far as I'm concerned, but um, yeah, I'm reasonably happy. We're getting our chance here. Yeah. John, uh, what are your feelings after that 90 minutes? I'm um, disappointed, is, is a big thing. You know, I thought it was a very even first half. It was very difficult conditions with the, the soft pitch and the wind. But um, you know, both teams had two or three half chances. I don't think anybody really had an open the whole match. Um, I thought, we'd, in terms of possession, totally dominate the second half. But never looked like cutting them open. You know, thistle for their, their guts and their effort. Uh, deserve the replay, make no doubts about that whatsoever. But uh, we didn't have the quality and uh, the necessary belief in the last third that we should have. There was a lot of determination out there from the Thistle players. Was a lot down to the new management? Yeah, I think you can put that across to uh, the new management team. Everybody's starting afresh and everyone's got something to prove. Um, we all want to stay in the team. Um, we all want to show the manager what we can do. In the first half, you went down the challenge uh, pulling for a penalty. Did you feel it was? I felt it was a penalty. Obviously, I got touched and I went down, so I was looking for a penalty. So. Didn't get up, so. What about for the replay then? Can you do it then? Oh, there's no doubt about that. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Uh, we're not at the cup by any stretch. Um, we'll go and we'll have a go. It's a cup tie. Uh, we'll know who we're playing. The draw will be made by that time, and um, there's a lot of work to be done. And, uh, and we can only get better. Believe me, we will definitely get better. Like any new club, I suppose, a club with new management team. Thistle got a lift today. It was a hard-fought cup tie. It wasn't a classic, Pat. It wasn't a lot of great football, but always interesting. Uh, yeah, it was interesting. Uh, it wasn't really an enjoyable first half. No, actually, it was a little bit of needle sort of came into it as, a, as the half wore on. But uh, I think Robo absolutely spotted it there. He, every word he said was correct. Uh, they controlled the second half. They done well, but they didn't look like scoring. They didn't look dangerous going forward. It was a load of half chances, but they didn't. Have, it was just that little lack of quality. And I think we're going to hear that for John Robertson for the next four or five months. And it's difficult for Hearts fans to take, particularly as well as Hibs are doing at the moment. Yeah, just, We were saying it watching the game, Gordon. I'm sure people at home are saying the same thing. You, you feel for Robbo with everything that's going on off the pitch. And it's not for us to say whether it's affecting things on the pitch. It would be surprising, though, if it didn't have some effect. Yeah, absolutely. I think that they need to get the whole thing tied up now. What's happening off the field, the takeover has to happen. Mm -hmm. And the very fact that it's happening now after the January window means that John Robertson probably won't even be able to go out there and invest in the team not knowing what funds are going to be there because I don't think there's any doubt he needs a striker. He's already lost to Vries, who's a top-class striker, but even before he went, Hearts are having problems scoring goals. That, even in the league, if you look at their goal-scoring record, it's not been great, and that's the reason why they've gone from being a third force last season to not being a third force at the moment. And on the day, they're as good a team as anybody else, but they're not finishing teams off. Yeah, they're certainly going through a little sticky patch at the moment, no doubt about that. Uh, let's talk firstly about Thistle, though, Pat, and the en enigmatic Armand Oney. Yes, the secret not the weapon. Most, not the most mobile you've ever seen. <laughs> no, I've, uh, I have actually seen Super Tankers turn quicker. But he was <laughs> at the centre of absolutely everything uh, for uh, Thistle today. You know, he stands most of the time, he actually plays that right up centre forward. It drifts a little bit in this kind of inside right area here. And it's not hugely sophisticated most of the time. But, you know, he was actually at the centre of most things and he's got to the byline and it's cut it back. He should have cut that back a little bit quicker. But because he's height and he's weight and he's bulk, and actually I probably shouldn't go any further than that, <laughs> he actually does cause problems. And right there, he's just stood beside the goalkeeper and the goalkeeper wasn't getting a hope, you know, not getting near getting near the ball. So this is the funny one. I mean, 
he's not in control of this whatsoever. But he's still manages to get out of it. And I think he's run out of legs here and just <laughs> kicks it away. But, it, you know, it's... <laughs> He'd actually at least a half decent chance uh, there. But, uh, it's a bit like seeing Bobo Baldi up front, really. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got to say, there is an effectiveness about him, but, yeah. uh, and, and you like him for the, kind of, the fact that he puts it about a bit, but uh, he is the fulcrum of, of everything that they've done yeah. going forward. I, I saw this against Falkirk a couple of weeks ago, and he went off to a standing ovation after scoring two goals. Mm -hmm. He's just that kind of player. Mm -hmm. From a Hearts point of view, uh, poor finishing, Gordon, just the point you're making about that lack of an out-and-out -out striker at the moment. And, yeah, they, they didn't look to have too many clear-cut chances. They, they, one or two decent efforts as well. Uh, I thought McKenna, McKenna leads the line well when he plays up front. He's always got on the end of things, but he's not an out-and-out -out goal scorer. He will score goals, but he's not a, a real top-class finisher. That's a good effort from him, you have to say, but I think what they need is, is somebody alongside him. And, uh, you know, the, the, this was the, a penalty appeal. I think, think that was a penalty, yeah. Mm. I have to say that I think Graham Weir's got it spot on there. It's, it's the, I think both take him. I yeah. actually think both took him and no one got the ball, so... Uh, this, is, this, like is London, the, this is the picture that shows it most, look. It's definitely con yeah. contact there. He's, he plays the ball and the two thistle players take him, but he got away with it. But there was there a few shots ago, there's, uh, you know, Nielsen's up there as well. He'll get fouled for them, but they had efforts on goal without him, many clear-cut chances to gain. That's, that's, that's the problem John Robson's got. But near the end of the game, they actually started to go for it from long range, you know, because they didn't have that great belief in that. and. Uh, I mean, we look at the weakness of that finish in there, you know, a natural goal scorer. To, today they missed Paul Hartley. Paul Hartley's been a brilliant player for them this season. I think he's been the heart and soul of the team this season. And he's got into those positions. And I think by this point in the time, they're getting absolutely desperate. But I think they're uh, right near the end of the half, a couple of half-decent ones. Uh, that's not necessarily winning it's them. Mainly, that's it's mainly long range, though. That's yeah. the thing. Not... Ro Robbo has a lot of faith in Dennis Wynas. He felt that he could bring back the form that Dennis Wynas showed at Inverness and hadn't shown so far at Tynecastle. Uh, I mean, if, if Robbo is going, if anyone's going to do it, Robbo's going to do it, because mm. there's nobody better than him as a goal scorer. They actually, it's been said many times before, they need a Robbo, <laughs> that's exactly what they need. <laughs> yes. And they can't get the boots on himself anymore just now. So, I mean, you do feel sorry for him, because there is absolutely no opportunity to get a, a, a proven centre forward in to do the job for him. I mean, they let people like Andy Kirk go down at Boston. He's scoring goals at Boston now, you know. So in the past, they've let people go that actually probably would have done them a job. Well, Lee Miller's meant to be coming in. So mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a big guy as well. He's a target man. He did uh, well at Falkirk, didn't he? Yeah, he yeah. did well at Falkirk. He's mm -hmm. never played at this level, though. That, that's the big test. You know, Ron Robertson's talking about bringing in players and he's bringing in a lad who played at Falkirk and then he's played in the lower divisions in England. So it'll be interesting to see whether he can do the job. And if he does do the job, then it's a good signing. But... It's like any other signing, it's always a risk element. Yeah, it was, as we said, a, a, a typical cup tie in so many ways. It's such a cliche, that. But uh, some of the tackles went flying in and no prisoners were taken. And, uh, here's this, a few this, examples. This is a bad touch. His first touch is bad from McAllister. And uh, I, I think that was a very, very bad tackle. That. I mean, he certainly, certainly hurt him there. He's hurt himself slightly as well, but, you know, he's stuck a bit right in there. And Kept his foot low, though. But I would, that's something I would say in his favour. His foot was uh, but in he, low in him. But I think he was diving in. Again, you can give the excuse for the conditions there. But he's diving in there. He's had two really rash challenges in a row. You know, and that's very close. And the next one here, the ball's gone up. And he's booked immediately for what is a kind of unnecessary trug and pull back there. Yeah. And I think it was a, a period in the game. I mean, the, the, the game was going OK. And just from those few challenges, people started getting upset, upset and the challenges started flying. And the, the, boots, the studs started getting raised a little bit after yeah. that. And it could have, uh, I mean, it's a really particularly good example. <laughs> that could have been nasty. Yeah. Uh, this is a bad, this is uh, Jane McAllister going down again there. And I think he goes down very soft there. And mm. he lay down and was taken off. Uh, Jamie's a good player, you know, but there is absolutely no need to go down and roll about that. I don't, mm. I mean, big only, he's a, he's, a, he's a big strong lad, but that wasn't that painful. You know, <laughs> just got him going again. Said five foot four inch Pat Nevin. <laughs> uh, as you would expect, uh, in a game like this, uh, the best chance of a goal perhaps was going to come from a set piece. And there's several examples of that, Gordon, I suppose, wasn't there? Yeah, well, I mean, the Hearts, they, they, they do get some efforts. I think that was a, a well worked free kick there. It's driven across there, and, you know, Stamp gets the shot in. That's the pressure on the keeper. I think they've worked now. I was impressed with the fact that they worked on those free kicks. That first one we saw there was worked on the training ground. That one there was straight on the top of it, on his head. This is a wee Thierry Henry one, isn't it? Yeah. He's asked the referee if he can take it quickly. And that's good thinking that. You see it from this angle, he's, he has to scamper across the goal there. This is exactly the same, I, this is the same idea, but not <laughs> quickly as well. But Execution wasn't quite as effective. <laughs> no. yeah, but as, as you said, Doug, I think it was. It was from free kicks. And this is the best hit one. And who does he think he is, Gary Bowling? <laughs> <laughs> that was a good 
good effort. Just it was, it was a good height for a goalkeeper. You, you wouldn't expect him to score with that. But you know, there's a, another corner right in on top of the keeper. The keeper does well. I think it's a touch on that one too. But there wasn't a lot. I mean, I, I've only seen highlights, and I'm certain that reflects the game. Mm. And having seen that, there weren't a lot of clear-cut chances. It didn't look as if it was anything like the Hibs Dundee game. I, I think you choose the right game to go to. I watched both of them coming in, and uh, certainly at Partick Thistle.